third, the, the double point question was using the balanced equation above, which you should have balanced, determine the number of moles of magnesium needed to produce five moles of magnesium sulfate. So what we know was five moles of MGS. What didn't we know? What's it asking for? Moles of magnesium. So what kind of problem is this? Mole to mole, mole to mass, mass to mass, mass to mole. What is it? It's mole to mole, right? Because you're starting with moles and you got to get the moles. So this is the simplest problem. So we're going to start with 5 moles of MGS. Now, the swinging door is what called what? What do we call this thing? What it gets us from one side of the equation to the next side? Mole ratio. Now, we want to get rid of moles of MGS, so just like in fractions, that'll go in the bottom. We want to get to moles of magnesium. What's our mole ratio of magnesium to magnesium sulfide? It's 8 to 8 or 1 to 1, so our answer is, our answer is 5 moles of magnesium. And what I did on there is I put every possible answer you could get doing all possible different kinds of calculations. So um, you had to know what the mole ratio was. You had to have it balanced correctly. Now, any questions on the lab? It needs to be finished up and turned in tonight. You had to do expected mass calculations, and then once you got the expected mass, you had to do the percent yield. So this is your time to ask a question about the lab. Questions? Good? All right. So today, limiting and excess reactants. Now, what this means is every time you do an experiment, one of the reactants will determine how much product happens. All right, and what that means is once it gets used up, the reaction stops and you will have excess of something else left behind. And start up. So we take sodium hydroxide, solid, okay. Hello? Yep, she's coming down. Okay, so we start with sodium hydroxide solid, the active ingredient in Drano or liquid plumber. We add HCl. And the reaction goes, we should make sodium chloride and water. Now, is this balanced to start with? Look across. I hear a no. I hear a yes. How many believe it's balanced? <coughs> okay, it is balanced, which means it's a one to one to one to one ratio. Now, sodium hydroxide weighs. 23 plus 16 plus 1, which adds up to, what, 37? Or 40, sorry. Is that right? 40 grams. What's HCl? 1 plus 35 and a half. 36 and a half. If I, if I put 40 grams of sodium hydroxide in 36 and a half grams of HCl, 
the reaction should go to completion because I've put exactly what I need in there. But when I show you this demonstration in class, I usually put way more of this in the beaker than I sprinkle this in. So what that means is I'm going to have excess hydrochloric acid. The sodium hydroxide will get all used up. I am going to create salt and water, but what's left over in my beaker? Think about it, kids. The hydrochloric acid, because what did I just say? I put way more in there than I need. <coughs> so the liquid that's going to be in that beaker is going to be some water, but it's also going to have a lot of hydrochloric acid in it. If I do this exactly the way it's written out, then it should go to completion, and I theoretically could be able to take the salt out and drink the liquid, but we don't do that in chemistry class. Alrighty, so now we're going to figure out how to calculate these. Because I can do this by eye. I can put a half a beaker full of hydrochloric acid out and sprinkle a little sodium hydroxide in. But when you get into industry, you want to be able to determine how much product's going to come out and what you're going to have left over because in some industrial processes you don't want to have the nasty stuff left over um, in the making of plastics they are they use what are called monomers monomers are cancer causing chemicals that when they're put together and to make plastic they polymerize and they become perfectly safe so when you're doing an industrial process, you got to determine what's going to limit my reaction and what am I going to have left over so I can plan for recycling or reusing the material. All right, so the limiting reactant is just that. It limits the amount of product that can be created. The excess is what's left over in the end. And in this class, when we do these experiments Friday or Monday, um, we will do a limiting and excess reactant experiments. And you'll have to calculate how much you need in order for reaction to go to completion but have extra left over. Now, here's our example. Silicon dioxide is quite unreactive, but it reacts readily with hydrogen fluoride, also known as hydrofluoric acid. Silicon dioxide is what they make glass out of. And hydrofluoric acid, you can contain it in a plastic bottle, but it will destroy a glass bottle, which is counterintuitive because of the reaction of the two together. The fluorine is so reactive with the silicon that it just does a double replacement reaction and causes all kinds of ruckus, but it won't do it in plastic because the plastic is relatively unreactive. So here's our problem. We got six moles of hydrofluoric acid added to four and a half moles of silicon dioxide. Which one limits the reaction when we put them together? All right, so Here's, here's our reaction here. So we have to have our balanced chemical equation. First thing we always do. So, silicon dioxide reacts with hydrofluoric acid. All right. In the reaction, the fluorine will kick the oxygen off because that's the reactive part and be replaced and so you get silicon tetrafluoride and then you have water left over. This is such a violent reaction that you can start with a solid and it will gasify the product. So if you were to do this exactly the way it's written here, when you came back you'd have a puddle of water on the table and no glass container. 
the glass container would be totally gone and the water would be left behind. Now, in all our problems, we always doubt, oh, first of all, is this balanced? No, that was pretty hearty no there. So what do we have to do? Balance it, <laughs> said the Captain Obvious in the back. <laughs> All right, Tyler. Yeah. So let's look side to side. How many silicons? One, one. How many oxygens? Two, one. Uh oh. Hydrogens and two fluorines, one and four. So we have to balance this. So if I put a four here, that that fixes the fluorines, correct? Now what do we mess up? The oxygen's already messed up, but now we messed up the hydrogens, right? So how do we balance the hydrogens? Put a two in front of the water. Does that fix our oxygens now? All right. Now, next question. What type of problem is this? What are we dealing with here? It's a mole to mole. Well, let's keep it simple. Let's not go crazy and try to change it to a mass to mass problem. This type of problem we can do in one step. Now, here's what you do for a limiting reactant problem. Here's our two reactants right here. And they are designed to make a product on this side. And we're going to pick this product and see how much each of it, each of them make. So it says choose one of the products and one of the reactants to solve and then doing the doing it once again. So our well okay, looks like we lost connection. Okay. Come on. I'm going to hit pause. All right, so I'm going to take SIF4 as my product. And so what we're going to do is solve this up. And it'll become fairly clear as we go through here. So here's what we know. We have six moles of hydrogen fluoride. We have four and a half moles of silicon dioxide. We want to figure out which one of these two is the limiting reactant. So we're going to see how much sodium or so, silicon tetrafluoride it will make. So what we're looking for is moles of SIF4. So let's start it. Six moles of HF. We want to get to moles of SIF4 and away from moles of HF. What's the ratio of SIF4 to HF? One to what? One to four. So what cancels? Moles of HF. So, what is 6 divided by 4? Okay. 1.5 moles of SIF4. So, what we did is we said, let's start with 6 moles of hydrogen fluoride. How much silicon tetrafluoride will that make? And it will make a mole and a half. Now, we do the problem again with four and a half moles of SiO2. So we want to see if we have this much, how much of it we going to make over here. 
So we want to get to moles of SiF4 from moles of SiO2. What's the ratio of SiF4 to SiO2? One to one. So if I start with four and a half moles of SiO2, how much am I going to make? Four and a half. So which of these guys up here are going to limit how much sodium or silicon tetrafluoride I'm going to make? HF. HF. Because it made the least amount of SIF4. Don't always assume the larger amount of material will make the most material product. All right? So we had six moles of hydrogen fluoride. It only made one and a half moles of silicon tetrafluoride. Yep. Will it always be like the opposite? So whoever has like the bigger number in the fraction, so like one to six, will always be more, will always be the limiting because that one's like 40, so 31. It's, it just depends on what you have here. It's, it depends on two things. Would, the main thing it depends on is the mole ratio up here. All right, if the mole ratio works, then it could be less. But sometimes the mole ratio will be, okay, you got the most reactant, it'll make the most product. Okay. But in this case, you, the ratio wasn't right, and so it made the least amount of product. So this is the limiting reactant. All right, the HF. The HF is the limiting reactant. Limiting reactant. And then this would be the excess. So when you came back the next day after having this glass sit in hydrofluoric acid, or in a gas cloud of it, you would still have some glass left behind. You wouldn't have, and you'd have a puddle of water, and you'd have a little cloud of gas, but you would have glass left over. All right. Now, um, I left it on the copier, but... I modified the assignment a little bit that you had last week. Still do the section review 9-2. You can lighten up the chapter review. Just do the even 6 to 16. If you, if you did it already, don't worry about it. You just got extra practice. We're going to make this due Thursday. We'll have a question and answer period tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to give you some limiting reactant problems that I have over on the copier today, and you'll have the rest of the class to work on them. And then there'll be a short quiz tomorrow again at the start of class. The lab Thursday may or may not happen just because there's three classes that need one oven to put all the stuff in. And so Mr. Lasorsa and Ms. Parrish and I all have to schedule out what we're going to do here. So I.